This is the greatest manipulation in history. There's never been anything to this scale before. They don't understand the direct linkage between central bank policy and social unrest. Everybody wants more money, but when you start talking about where money comes from and how it's distributed, everybody's eyes glaze over. Here at the start of 2020, we've just said goodbye to the 20 teens, a decade defined by central bank intervention. Since the great financial crisis began in late 2008, the world's central banking cartel has increased the global money supply by a net total of roughly $14 trillion. And despite being in recovery for the past 10 years, the majority of the world's central banks are back shoving liquidity into the system once again. So where has all this intervention gotten us? Many would say to the peak of the biggest asset price bubble ever blown in history. I think that we were actually uh, in the process of bursting again in 2016. All the indexes put up these beautiful head and shoulders patterns. We saw global trade really beginning to start to fall off the rails. I think everybody was saying, whoa, this looks like it could be it. And then one night out of nowhere, uh, everything you know just went the other direction. And my model for that is the central banks learned that you can actually, if you put enough adrenaline into the heart of the patient, you can, you can actually even turn around uh, what appear to be crumbling macroeconomic statistics, right? So this was things like trade and rail shipments and all that, right? Well, that's happening again. The more that I study everything that they've been doing, the more I fearful I become for the common man. Most people don't even want to hear it. I mean, some people are uh, interested in what's going on, but a lot of people just want to bury their head in the sand. But when you sit down and you help people connect the dots uh, and you see the kind of veil lifted from their eyes, it, it's extraordinary. You know, people understand that the cost of living is going up. They understand that they don't feel better off, but they're constantly being bombarded with headlines or tweets saying the economy is the greatest it's ever been. Your college tuition goes up $10,000 every two years, but we're saving $100 on a TV, yay. Um, your health care insurance uh, quadrupled to 4000 a month, but hey, you save $50 on jeans. The, the real question is, can they control it? And if they can't, what happens, right? And we already got within a couple of whispers and whiskers of financial system seize-ups. 2008 was one. You know, everything got bailed out and no lessons were really learned and the imbalances are now larger. Do the central banks have any other option at this point besides continuing to try and just keep everything you know, stapled together and pump more and more in? And the answer is I don't think they believe they have that option. But the more I learn, the scarier it becomes. <laughs> just absolutely amazing what they've gotten away with. And this is basically criminal activity. When this bursts this time, it's dangerous. This is something that people really need to protect themselves against. What's it gonna take for the pitchforks to come out? Like how much more does the common man need to be abused before he sort of wakes up to this and says, I'm not gonna take it.